Hi guys, I hope you're good since last video. We have seen struct and implementation of method in the last video. Here we're going to discover enums, which I initially thought were like Python pydontic, but uh, they're not. We will have parallel learning of pattern matching, different ways to do it. Touch some uh, borrowing and ownership concept a bit, which are always present. Go through some compiling errors, reviews, and um, yeah, we're gonna be uh, reviewing those errors and uh, reading those and act upon those errors. Please like and subscribe. Watch the video to the end. We'll have the first part explaining a bit what are enums then jump into the terminal for some experiments. Let's get started. Enum variant types. Enums in Rust. I put versus Python because I thought it was like a Pydantic, but it's not. So enums in Rust are not like Pydantic. While Pydantic in Python is used for data validation and structuring with fields, Enums in Rust represent a type that can be one of several variants, each potentially with different associated data. So just think it like that, one custom type, several variant types possible. So you create a custom type and you will have seven variants of that custom type. And each variant will be able to be linked to a type of data. So let's see through the example. We have an enum here, we use the keyword enum to define it. It's called issue, with a capital I. Inside there is bug, which uh, hold strings, and improvement, which hold U64 integers. So issue can be one of several distinct types. Here the types are bug and improvement. So we created custom types, so this issue now can take different types and each variant can hold a different uh, type of data. String U64 in this example. Where in Pydantic or Python is about defining data model with fields. Here REST enums define multiple exclusive possibilities for a type. So you create a custom type and issues and inside you're gonna put uh, the different uh, values that it can take and you what is good with that is that you don't just put string u64 uh, boolean and so on you can put uh, explicative names like a uh, issue bug issue improvement so this goes um, a little bit further and uh, help to have a descriptive name for those different types sometimes yeah, compile, but compiler will uh, notify that some code haven't been uh, used. This is a little bit of a, it's a parenthesis because we're going to see it later on. I'm going to explain it now um, because some code haven't been used or instantiated. So if you create a function, a struct or an enum here in this case, and you don't uh, use uh, one of the fields or you don't use the, the whole object, you're gonna get a warning to the compiler saying run dead code. What you can use is uh, to allow dead code. So to allow for code not to be used and uh, the code might be used later on or not used at all. So in Rust, the compiler warns you about a new code, example, an enum variant or function that's defined but not used. So you use, um, this is like a decorator allow that code so that's the syntax that's how you write it you put a dash you put into the brackets and you uh, you you use the it's a function maybe it's a method allow and inside there will be a dead code to suppress these uh, warnings if the code is unused or purpose on purpose or will be used later on so let's see through the example that you can put this decorator 
on the um, just above the enum so above the object or you can put it inside just uh, to target one specific field or if there's several fields you can put it on the several different uh, fields and it will be uh, allowing those fields to not be uh, used in the code without warning you into the compiler without getting a warning so here we see the first example we put it on the top the decorator on the top of the enum issue so if you want you don't use uh, enum issue at all or you don't use improvement or you don't use bug while in the other one uh, you, it's allowing you to not use improvement which is not going to be uh, showing any warning into the compiler so this prevents the compiler from warning you that issue variants are defined but not used so we close the parenthesis here for that and we will be seeing it later on struct i'm going to create here some structs because i want to show you a little bit more advanced way of using uh, the enums because uh, it's not just a string or u64 has in the previous example you can also um, have those variants representing a, a, a whole object so a struct we have here a struct called the bug details with description and severity as fields we have another one that we have defined is called the feature request details feature request details describe with description and user and uh, here enum to represent the different types of issues so enum issue and we have bug which uh, is an is an is an of a type bug details and we have a feature request which uh, is of a type feature request details so they both take the the above struct as um, as types and uh, we have the other one which is just a normal one u64 improvement let's uh, let's see here the details of it so bug details is a struct with two fields description and severity as we said feature request details is a struct with two fields description and user and the issue enum has three variants one is bug which contains a bug details type feature request with feature request details type and uh, improvement with a u64 type so here creating instances with structs and enums when you create an instance of issue and you want to use a struct as uh, the data associated uh, with the enum variant you must fully initialize the struct as we've seen in the previous video when you instantiate a struct you need to use all the fields you need to uh, define them all so initialize all the fields and uh, here you cannot partially create a struct all fields must be provided this is just a reminder of uh, the difference between enums and struct because for enums we will see uh, that it's a bit different for struct you have to define all the, the fields so here we're going to create a bug detail here we're going to see the applied example through the code how to use it because we have just seen the structure just before how to build it but how to use it now we're going to create a bug detail so instantiate bug detail with the field description and severity we're going to do the same for bug for feature requested details i mean so we we um after having instantiated the i'm just going to use here the arrow so after having instantiated the bug details description and severity we put it here in the variable bug details we're going to be uh, here creating an issue of type bug so issue bug and we put the bug detail inside because it was the struct of type uh, bug details and we do the same here for feature request details put in the variable feature request details we define the fields and after we're going to create an issue too which is a type of feature request which has this struct as a type and after here we create the second the third one which is issue three of type improvement and here we have a, just a u64 which was the type of uh, this uh, variant 
So when you match on an enum variant that has a struct, as it is, uh, it's as its data, you can extract and work with specific fields of that uh, struct. So struct, you need to define all the fields. And here, just tell to yourself, enum, I don't need to match all the fields when I'm uh, when I'm trying to to catch any uh, any of those fields and check if uh, they have the the right types. So here in the code example, we create a function describe issue. This is a type of issue. So here we have an enum, and here we're going to use match. We're going to go more into the details of match and how to uh, to do it in a different way. But here we want to check if the fields um, of the right types. So issue. Here we use the bug, the bug variant. We check if it is a bug detail and description, which is uh, just one field. And we use the double dot. So we don't need severity here. We could put severity after this, but we don't need it. We can check only one field if we want. We can target it. And after here, we're just uh, going to be uh, formatting the, the print. So if we have this case, this will be printed. If we have this case, if the issue passed here is a future request, future request. So let's say if it is this one here, it's going to be printing future request from after the user. It's going to be just targeting the user and saying Alice. So that's how you can target just one field. And here, issue improvement, estimated hours. For example, if you pass in this one here, on the top here, those ones are going to be invalidated, while this one is going to be validated because it is the right type. Improvement 5, and after it's going to be printed. So that's how you can target specific fields when you have um, more complex types, like a, a full struct, which uh, is divided with which is, uh, I mean, implemented with different uh, fields. So let's talk about pattern matching. We have match that we've seen before. Then we have iflet. Iflet is, uh, I understand it more like uh, if else in Python, but uh, you will see that uh, it's, we're going to precise what it is really. Well, match, I see it more like a catch. So, match used to handle all possible variants of an enum. It's exhaustive, so meaning you must handle every case, making your code robust. So, here we have an example match issue. We use here issue. So, here we are based on the first example that we have. So in the enum, there is, a, I mean, in the one that you had just before here, issue, we have bug description. We return the description. And here we have the improvement in our, we return the improvement in our, in Python. This is similar to a series of if, else if statements, but match ensures all cases are handled like using enum with exhaustive check. So for me here it says, yeah, I say if else, but it looks like more Python. We have also the case. We can use the case. So that's uh, how much uh, is uh, is made. And uh, here, that's what we want to see. There's another way of doing it is using if let use the to match one specific variant. So here it says that match need to handle all possible variants. But um, you don't need to match all possible variants. As you can see here, we can match just uh, two different variants of it. Um, and here we have the, the match for one specific variant, which is iflet. So iflet is same, it's not only for one. You can also match all of them if you want. So it's just two different ways of doing it. Iflet issue description. So here we target the description, we check with issue, let's say this is inside the function, and we passed in a, 
a parameter called issue. And here we're going to be printing the, the description. Okay. So this is more like a selective check, similar to Python's if is instance, but allows extracting data from the enum variant directly. So I'm trying to match it with uh, the Python uh, counterpart. So it's not really like that. It's more flexible here. So you can use if let, just tell to yourself, or you can use match, depending on the syntax that you prefer, to uh, try to target those fields in the enum, or few fields, or all of them. So now let's jump into the terminal. Enum variant types. So let's go into this terminal and check. This is what we got last time. So we're going to create a new module. We're going to call it enum types rs. And we're going to go slowly building it. And we're going to play with the terminal and everything. So be patient and look every step because it's very important to understand. So here, enums are here to provide us several options, variants, types. For a single see it or single value variable single variable or function outcome So we use the keyword enum. This is the keyword that we're going to use to define our enum. And we're going to call it manga kisa issue. So we stay in the issue stuff. Enum manga kisa issue. We're going to create the different variants. And we're going to be kind here and just uh, Use the normal names, <laughs> list of numbers. So I give the names in regard of the type you're using. So here it's a vector holding integers, positive ones, U64, and the one issue, which is holding a string. issue ranking new 64 mm, we do that So let's define our enum. We're gonna call it manga kisa and we stay in the issue stuff. So manga kisa issue. We're gonna define here the variant of manga kisa issue based on the, the type. So here I'm not gonna use uh, crazy names. I just say list of number because it's a vector of U64 and uh, one issue because here is just a string that we're going to use. So, string that will be the type. Nice manga kisa issue. That's our enum defined, which has two different types list of number or one issue. So, we got our custom. Uh, enum uh, 
Let's close those comments. Maybe I can add here what is interesting is that we give meaningful names to those types actually uh, for those types. So vector is a vector list of numbers string one issue because if you have here let's say seven vectors you need to have name of it it's better so let's keep going into the next um, next step here we're gonna start creating our function so Use a function checking on the custom type types we have created using match. pattern so we're going to use what we've seen in the, in the first part of the video where we were explaining different ways of uh, matching patterns to check on the, those uh, those variants so here we call the function issues underscore at underscore shibuya we pass in a parameter issue, which is of a type mangakisa issue, which is our enum, has to be of that type. And we need to check that using the match. It returns a boolean, so it has to return true or false. Here we match issue. So we take the variable, which is an owned variable, Mangakisa issue, one issue. We pass here a placeholder, so I put sentence. Because it's a sentence, it's a string. But you can put anything here. So it's a string. But um, yeah, rest understand that sentence is a string. So this is just a placeholder. And um, if it is uh, a one issue, so if the issue passed, it in, passed into the function is validated as being the Mangakisa one issue variant, it's going to return false. Because we, what we want to return as a true is the list of numbers we have just decided here for this example. Here I put list of nums as a placeholder and you see just before sentence on list of names I um, added an underscore I'm gonna comment on it just to say why we're using that so here you can see how much is formatted we have the parameter that we want to validate and see if it is one issue, we invalidate, we say false. And if it is an issue, if it is a list of number, if it is a manga kisa list of numbers, so it has to be specific to that uh, enum, we return true. So I'll be commenting after on the underscores. So here let's make our public function. That's the function that we're going to be able to export and use in the main.rs. So the compiler is going to be discovering this one. 
let's make this so we're going to call it issue at shibuya but uh underscore action it takes also an issue has parameter of type manga kisa issue it's returned also a boolean it's just to play with the private and public concepts that we've seen before so here we're going to use the same here we're going to be matching so we're trying to see everything at the same time so we'll be able to see also the borrowing and ownership concepts as here we use only owned values for the moment later on i'll be focusing on that So here in the match, as I told you, issue is an owned value. So it's an owned uh, variable. So that's why here we're using ref, the ref keyword, because we want a reference. We want an uh, ampersand of issue, which is going to take the placeholder of sentence underscore settings we'll explain the underscore after we go step by step so here if it matches that it's going to call the other function anyway and that's the other function which is going to be validating and invalidating it so returning true or false so let's talk about the underscore now otherwise we're going to create some confusions for nothing I'm going to put it here because that's uh, here that where we used it the first time. So underscore is used to say that we don't use that variable. So it is just a placeholder variable. We can use it after instead of saying false we can print the variable or anything else but here has we don't use it so when you don't use a variable you put an underscore as here we're using it just as a placeholder and we're going to talk here straight away about the ref ref keyword that we're using here you know percent which is a borrowing reference and here we have also the keyword ref which is gonna be borrowing the reference of the past parameter issue which is an owned parameter and be able to use it again because if you want to match issue, issue several times, we need to be able to reuse it again. So we try to not move the ownership. So here without moving the ownership, because we, are, we instantiate here issues underscore at Shibuya between parentheses issue, which is consuming it. So this is like moving the ownership. That's why we use a reference so that uh, the issue passed in it's uh, referring to the sentence the ref sentence or the ampersand sentence so i'm going to change the name just to match the names that we have put uh, above but you can put uh, any name here so manga kisa here the variant is a list of number that we want to match. We use the reference list names. So we're reusing issue, but we have uh, the reference of it. So from one owned value, you can have several references. So that's the rule. From one owned value, you can have only one mutation of it. So here we put the pub, 
you want to say that it's public. The enum here, I don't put anything for the moment because I want you to see what happened to the compiler, what it's going to say, and to see how cool is the compiler also. So enum types will be our module. The function that we're going to instantiate there is issues at Shibuya actions. We want to pass in a mangakisa issue and we want to match and check with that parameter issue with that parameter is a mangakisa so returning a boolean true or false if it is a one issue that's why we use here the reference so we want to match it several times so we need uh, to use the reference of it and here we call the other function which is going to tell us if it is true or false because this function as well this private function returns a boolean which is false if it is a one issue and true if it is a list of numbers okay so manga kiss issue is our enum type two different variants a vector of int and the string one issue that's a little recap so now we got it let's go into the main function and do the gymnastic we got the module no that's not this how did we call it enum underscore types put the semicolon let's print here if you want you don't print you just uh, call it straight away as we just uh, do it uh, once so do we need um, the type so we didn't implement any display we're going to talk about display maybe in future videos. Um, so we're going to use here the colon uh, question mark so that the println macro is going to use the debug mode to uh, print it as it's implemented there. So issues at Shibuya, Act Shibuya Actions is the function enum underscore types is our module we use double columns to call that function that function is public so we should be able to access to it and here inside that function we need to instantiate uh, as a copy paste from uh, before manga kiss issue One issue. Yeah, we're gonna do both. So manga kiss issue. Let me put it here so we can see it. Let's move this down. Okay. So let's put something in. We're gonna put a string. Naruto without any sound. Dot to string. So we have an str that we uh, transform into a to string. So a string with a capital S. So that's the type of this one issue variant of manga kisa issue enum. And let's uh, maybe copy everything and just uh, do the same for the other field so here we're gonna put a semicolon i'm gonna put the semicolon anyway let me copy this and paste it here just change 
which we need to change. This here we're going to use another method. It is a vector. So list of numbers was the name of this variant of Mangakisa issue enum. And inside we're going to put some uh, random numbers 109, 75 or 12, 012, and we're going to put 007. And here to vect. So I'm gonna transform it to a vector. An array transform into a vector. Okay. Should we go play with the compiler? Cargo run. Nice. A lot of red in the screen. So let's read this. Use of undeclared type manga kisa issue. This comes back a lot. So it doesn't know what is manga kisa issue. Not found enum types. Hmm. So enum types. I don't understand, but this one I get it. Manga kisa issue. It did it on purpose. So one we did on purpose, but the other one not. So here you see, to create the module enum type, create a file. Okay, so here is telling me how to create a module. So that means I made an error in importing the module. If there is a module enum types, elsewhere in create, in the creator already imports so we can use use create instead. Okay, so it's giving us two different ways to import the module, but I've made a, a mistake. Uh, I've seen it, I know why. So here, after we've done reading this, create, use create, we can use this. But, uh, I need to fix one of the error. You see here I'm gonna cut. It's called enums types. You see there's a S. So I didn't want to put that S. That's why when I imported it as enum type it didn't work. So let's just change the name to enum types. Okay, so we're gonna get rid of one error. Let's uh, run it again and now we get the intended error, the one that we wanted to see, the only one that we wanted to see. So undeclared type, Mungakisa issue is not declared. And here is giving us an int, enum, create a crate. So we can import it like that. Create enum types, Mungakisa issue exists, but is not, is inaccessible. So it's very nice from the compiler to tell us that. So it's telling us that this enum has uh, found the enum, but it's just precising that it's not accessible. So you can see here, enum, manga kisa issue. That's what we have in. Here it's public for the function, but the enum is not accessible. So we need also to fix that. We need to fix it and we need to import it. So let's go in the main.rs because we got an int here. Just give us the solution here and how to import the enum. Create enum types mangakisa issue. So here we import it and we use the keyword use. Okay, so we import it like that. We close that. We go in enum types. So I just compiled again just to show that it says that it's private. So you can see all the steps of that. So I've also forgotten uh, to put the semicolon here. So you need the semicolon when you import anything. And after here, the compiler tells us that it's a private enum. We need to address it and add the keyword pub, public. So go in step by step 
we can understand why we need some different syntax. Now we can compile it. Nice, we get false and true that we were expecting. We'll be printing first one issue, which is a false. Normally that's what we want to return, but we want true list of numbers. Just gonna cut here one issue. Here as the first one to string. And here we get the second one here. That's what we have printed. So ignore the rest. That's what we've did we've done in the previous videos. I might need to clean up this uh, main.rs uh, and that's the other file. That's what we uh, wanted to match. False for one issue, true for a list of numbers. And that's what we got. That's perfect. So, one is a issue, list of numbers. And one issue here is a string and we don't want it. We don't want to say it's true because we want only a list of numbers. That, that's the case of this uh, example. Enum types. Let's go in. And now we are going to comment out this match pattern. Why do we do that? Let's see. Let's be patient. This is commented out. Matching using iflet. So let's use iflet now. We've seen the explanation at the beginning of the video that we can match using match issue. But here I'm going to show you that uh, you can use the other way. Uh, not matching only one, but matching uh, all the different types, different variants, I mean. So another way to do pattern matching is using iflet. Closer to Python way. I don't know. That's how I I see it. Because it's if, else, and everything. But the match way can be seen as a Python, you know, the case. You use the cases. So it can be seen like that style of matching. I think both can be seen like that. If let let's get this. So here we use if let mangakisa issue or an issue. We use reference sentence. So here, sentence, I don't put the underscore. Because I'm going to use it. And the sentence here is going to be a placeholder. Hold. Using the ref, which is going to be borrowing. So we use ref to borrow the parameter issue. Of type manga kisa issue enum. This placeholder variable is just to have a, a way to, to have it in a meaningful way explained and written in the code. We are going to use it, therefore, this time, no underscore to notify the compiler that we are not going to use this variable. So it's good so that you can see different ways. You can understand why we use underscore. In this uh, case, if you don't use the underscore, the compiler is gonna just, um, it's not gonna fail. I think it's gonna just return a warning and uh, advising you to use that. So what do we want here? If the parameter of uh, type mangakisa issue passed into the function matches uh, one issue, 
we want to be using the string of that reference. So we get the value of it and we pass it to the issue that Shibuya function. Okay. So sentence here and to string. So it's like copying. It's like uh, we have a reference of it, and now we're making a copy of that reference, and we're playing with that copy, so that the parameter issue is still owned, still an owner of its own variable, of its own value. We use to string to get a copy of the value behind the issue of what is a. Uh, issue is holding so we need to play with this uh, little gymnastic that we don't have in uh, python because here we're a little bit closer to the to the machine even if there is uh, still some uh, some layers before reaching uh, the bottom the machine the assembly. Let me copy this. We need to treat the other case. We're gonna just change what needs to be changed. Get rid of those comments. Okay. If I forgot anything, please tell me before I go to compile. Okay, so we don't get uh, an error, because I can make some. Try to spot the errors. Get your own logic of how you would uh, have done it. Comment it in the comment, in, uh, the comment section as uh, you're learning with me. So here, list of numbers this time. Reference placeholder list names. I use the same names because you can use any placeholder name. Here it's a else if statement. So we have another case of uh, the issue parameter that can be of type of variant list of number. Let me close those ones here. All the comments. Okay, let's put the else statement and uh, we're gonna print, so let me write it, print ln and we put this will never be triggered. As we are not handling errors. So for the moment we're not handling errors yet. Just to return true or false. So here I have to return false for the else statement to not get any error because this function is returning a boolean. We're gonna get a compiler compiler error for that. And after the print line we need the semicolons because it's not the, it's not the last line of that scope and false. You don't need to put the semicolon because it's the last line of that scope. This is a scope. Reference sentence. Matching issue. We use issue. Achieve we are. Instantiate inside one issue with that sentence to string. With that, uh, yeah. After here, we have another case for the manga case issue. List of numbers. Let's go. So we got an error here. List of numbers. Need the S. There's a little typo. So this is the type of error you should have told me before. Cargo run, another error. 
get used to see the errors, that's good. So we're not going to abandon the, the lessons, learning the language because you're getting some errors. That's why I'm not using uh, VS Code here. I just uh, want to write it like that as I'm learning. We use two vect to make a copy of the value behind the reference borrowed. Okay. Now it should be all right. Let's try. Yes, so we've seen how to do it using if let statement, adding more variants. So let's go into that enum. Let's add more variants and uh, play, with it, play with it a little bit more. We're going to use a U64 for the issue ranking variant. We're going to use another variant called unknown. Okay, we're not going to use uh, any struct, we're not going to over complicate it. You've seen it in the explanation at the beginning when you got the examples, so you can refer to those examples. Mongakisa issue, matching an issue. So here we're matching one issue and list of numbers. So two different variants. We, had, we have added issue ranking variant and the unknown. I'm going to show you. While you're using match, you can use underscore here. It's a placeholder which is going to match anything else. So if you have a thousand different variants and we want to just check one issue and list of numbers and we want to ignore all of the other ones we can handle it like that we use the println here we put an e before it so it's an error handling println so if this fails it's going to panic it's going to be uh, stopping uh, the application so type not valid only List of numbers. I'm going to put the type here of fact U64. Okay, so only the type is valid. So we can still check on one issue. Is going to return false. So, one issue of type string permitted. But, but, but. Okay. Put the semicolon. This is returning a boolean. So, go to the println. But we, uh, we don't want to have a, an error as it returns a bool, so it has to return something which is true or false. So we're just going to return false here. That's our level, that's where we're at in our learning uh, journey. And we're going to go step by step. So I'm going to get rid of this and I'm going to introduce here the panic. So it's a macro which is going to just uh, stop your application. So here, if it is not matching one issue, a list of numbers, it's going to be uh, panicking. It's going to be returning an error and stopping the application, unexpected issue, variant. Okay, so 
So we have those uh, this enum. It's public. We have those two new variants in it. We are handling every single case, but uh, targeting two variants or just the two variants and the, all of the other ones. We just have uh, packed them here with the underscore and returning uh, this. Just let me here. Here, the underscore means that it matches all other possible variants. Oops. That's it. So after that, we can see, we will see uh, some warnings. And we are going to see how to handle those warnings also. Tab is not valid. So I'm putting the, the print, but we might not need it. I'll show you later on. But, uh, we can get rid of it. Just to have uh, something structured coming from Python. Just seeing how it's uh, built. So here we have the same uh, object printed, but we're gonna add one, which is gonna be of uh, a type of um, ranking. So here is just a U64. Can I add here the type? What was the name? It's. Issue ranking, I think. Yes, issue rankings or ranking. And we put inside the U64, so any positive number, I put 10. No, I put 109. Because we're in Shibuya, don't forget. This number is important. But because it's an issue, I should have put maybe one. 110 or something different. 109. Abunai. Okay, so now we get the object. Let's go to the compiler. Cargo run. We got some warnings. It's okay, we're gonna handle that later on. We get the false, the true expected. And after we get the panic. Panicking, stopping the application. Unexpected issue variant. Okay. After we have another main variable that we're not going to use here. We want nice clean outputs. Here it says one dead code, as you've seen in the explanation at the beginning of the video. Compiler can do that. Variant unknown is never constructed. You see, we never used it. Allowing that code for the time being. So it's better to handle all the different cases. So to have full control on, uh, on your code. But you can use here the decorator. Allow that code on the top of the enum. And here, you see when we compile it, this time we, we get a nice clean output without any warning because now the compiler knows that for this enum we might not use all the variants. Adding one more match, so we're here on the score. Let's move, let's just uh, comment this out. Okay, this is commented. And here, I'm going to use the match for that. So 
So let's keep this commented. Okay, and we're gonna play with the match. So we've seen with the if else how to uh, add this panic. So which is gonna print. Here, what we can do, we can use the same pattern as the one that we have above. Should I just copy it? Let's copy it, maybe. I'm gonna copy it like that. Where is it? Here. Okay. Oh, I didn't copy everything. So I need to type it. Okay, let's uh, just uh, type it. Let's check what is in. Okay, everything is good. Underscore. Put the little arrow. We need to enclose it to curly braces. The second one, do not forget it. Okay, we got it. Let's move the maybe the indentation of false. So here, curly braces. It's okay, I can close it here. Let's compile. We don't need the semicolon and here we got the print that is invalid but this is the print of uh, this function because that's the one that we need so we can maybe change uh, that sentence because the, we have both settings are uh, showing the same so we're just gonna move this remove this another sentence just to show that uh, the sentence that we put in the the private function which is uh, issues at Shibuya we don't need it uh, not valid and that's what is going to be printed here you see not valid and we got the false Let's go back in. And here, let's comment this out. Just want to show that we don't need this, uh, this print here. So curly braces, we don't need it. Yeah, maybe false like that. Yes. Okay. Not valid. So you see, it still works. Just not. Just need to return a, a boolean. So here's the break. Please like and subscribe. Borrowing references to not move on a ship. So we use the ref, but uh, let's use what we've learned before. We used ampersand. How do you use ampersand here to use the same concept of reference? So we're going to be passing into those functions ampersand manga kisa issue. So it's going to be taking the reference of that uh, issue variable, issue parameter passed into the function. Okay. So as we do that, we don't need anymore to use the ref keyword. Just use those placeholders. Okay. 
I'm doing it, I'm doing it on purpose. You're gonna be seeing here Manga Kisa issue ampersand. So we're passing in references. That's what we want. Let's run this. And it works. You see, there's different ways of doing it. The borrowing and ownership concept to play with it. Borrowing references to not move ownership. But uh, with the if let this time. So with the match, now you, you understand. You get rid of the ref. Here we're going to be uh, changing those curly braces and comments. So I have an extra curly brace here. Compiler didn't catch it. Just getting rid of uh, ref. Settings. Let's comment this out because you don't see anything of what I'm doing. Get rid of this curly brace because we have one at the bottom. And we're going to comment out the match statement. Because we want to use only the if let. So, what are we doing here? We're getting an error telling us that we need to use uh, the reference here because in the, in the first one, the if let, I got rid of the ref. The compiler is nice with uh, beginners, as it's telling us, giving us some hints. Ampersand to add here. Ampersand here. And this works. So you see, it works even if in the second one, I kept the the ref keyword. So now we can create a custom object with structs. We can add methods to those objects with implementation. We can have custom types that can have different variant types and of values. A bit complicated. Yes, little bit, but it's okay. <laughs> Next, we will, uh, we will, uh, we will do short or long video we will see or a long video like this one or two shorts um, to talk about display implementation and different error handling different ways to handle errors we will be explaining like here at the beginning using using this time the examples that we've used in the explanation uh, side, we will use those same examples in the coding terminal side. So we will just to be uh, using those examples. So we check if there's any errors with the compilers or anything else. We do the same process of learning. So we're going to stop here. Hope that you liked uh, this video. Thank you for your support. Please uh, like and subscribe and uh, see you next time for another have a break, have a rest session.